tie the Melbourne Octopus I'm going to use this as a camisan, it's a B175 size 10 thread I'm going to be using is a chartreuse uni in 8 -0. Now I'm simply going to put down a layer of thread along the shank until I reach the barb of the hook and then remove the base piece. Now I'm going to form a tag on this fly. I'm going to use this as Mirage. Now it's a medium and opal. Now I'm going to tie it on the side. So offer it to the side and hold it with a thread or two, two, two or three turns. And then come round the bend with the thread and then bring the thread back up. Now you're going down about say four mil or so. Now I want to sort of bring the colour out a wee bit better in this by the olive side. Um, this is a Pantone pen and it's a, if I remember if you can see that's 119T is the colour. Now, all I do is mark, using the marker pen, you can mark both sides. It just turns out that kind of goldy colour, if you can see it there. Really nice and bright. And then, to protect it, come in, a tiny bit of super glue under when the thread turns, and work your way up. This will instantly stick the flash. And then tie off. Two or three turns. Then for the tail, I'm using a glow bright floss. This is number eleven. Now there's twenty fine strands, the glow bright floss is quite thin. Now, for added protection, you could actually go over this with uh, some varnish and then tie the fly once it's dry. But it's okay the way it is. Now, at this point, I'm going to tie this on using the full length of the body. Now, you're looking for, at the front, at least 3mm of a tying area to tie in the hackle, hackles itself. Now, the length of the body, the length of the tail. And then, with a fine brush, open these fibres out. You see the difference when you fluff them out, it sits really nice. It sits on the top. Now, for the rib, I'm using a number 14, or a small oval gold tinsel. And the way back down, I'm going to tie this in. Just catch it on the side. And quickly bring your thread down. Now for the dubbing, here it's there. Now I've used a nice light olive and this is a copper olive, it's like a ginger seals for and I've blended both together and as well I've added in some, this is some light bright pearl blue as they call it. It's just a pair that's a dubbing. You just cut it in the proper lengths and then you use, I use a Krupp's coffee grinder. And all I do is air it. I don't cut, I just put the dubbing in and I just press the side to it slightly. Just airs it in or mixes it. No, I don't sit and hold it down and chew it all up. I sit and blend it together. Now you take some out and dub it onto your, your thread. Nice and light. Once you get a turn on, you can start to tighten up. Swat your way up. Always tightening as you go. You get to this point here. Anything going forward, just draw it back. Now we've got two hackles here. Now we've got a greeny olive, as we call it. It's a lovely greeny olive grizzle. And a golden olive. These are both saddle hackles, met saddle. Grade twos uh, from the cock, the other cock bird. Uh, it's a nice capes. Now we tie them both in together. Just remove the fine fluff at the bottom, and then take your thread down and remove the excess. 
stem and tighten up and then both together I do a turn at the top and then down about around about three turns and then bring your rib across to tie them in and then you're looking for around about four to five turns on the way up now I normally just take one at a time off and break these off and lay them down, lay them down for another fly then before I bring up the last turn of the rib come up the side with the thread a nice elbow bend into the oval tinsel make sure it's tied down and then remove the excess now you could get some velcro at this point and bring out some of the flash some of the UV and some of the seal spur into the actual hackle bring it in just take your time and watch the thread, you don't want to catch the thread this is a the rump feather from the golden pheasant now I've dyed it chartreuse as you can see it's got a kind of greeny colour there, this chartreuse colour but as you look at the tips the tips are very bright and down this area is very bright as well which adds to the flight, now you could use the natural if you want it's entirely up to yourself, which is just yellow but I like to give them a kick and this is how I like to do it and use a, a chartreuse dye now the one I used was a Venier's dye now remove the fine fluff from the stem and we tie this in by the tip just offer it to the side and three or four turns down and fold the tip back Bring the thread back up, keeping a hold of the tip, don't let it go. I keep the hackle out of the way because I want to trim that away and if I let it go, it will disappear into these fibres and you'll spend a minute trying to find it. Now, what I do here is fold these back and wind one turn in front of the other and pulling the fibres back as I go. Just take your time. Fibre length can be actually quite long you can get it short, but a good length in the fibre makes it swims extremely well in the water. Now come up with the stem, put a 90 degree bend in. Now what I like to do is come down towards the eye and then fold the stem back nice and tight. Keeping hold of the thread, you can break this off. And as you can see, it makes a lovely, lovely hackle. I'm just going to brush the fibres open so you can see what it's like and the, the, the hackles underneath will keep this up and it sits extremely well now you could tie off at this that could be it finished now what I do here is I've got some this is um, some deer deer body here in olive and it's a Wopsy product and this one I got from the Glasgow Angling Centre so what I'll do here is simply take some of the deer here and then open out the fibres and you'll see that fine fluff there's actually a fine fluff there, you've got to remove that because I'm going to stack it if you, st if you leave these fine fine fluff or under, or underneath or around the fibre what will happen is that they'll just not stack at all, they'll stick together now put them in tip first and then start them until the tips have lined up remove them now this part of the wing should be tips towards the back of the tail that goes into your finger and thumb there's your length now you can straighten this up with a nice cut just come in nice and tight bring your thread through do it your way down come back up always keeping a hold of the wing see how it's sitting this just adds a wee bit more to the fly entirely up to you what you want to do now this is another addition, you don't have to do this but I'm going to do it just to show you this is Jungle Cock Eyes dyed a fluorescent yellow two small eyes now you're seeing the underside of the, the feathers I'm going to hold the, at the ends and I'm going to draw back what I don't need then I want either side, I have to put them on both at the same time you can put them on individually, it's entirely up to yourself 
I want two or three turns in because I want to check to see where they're, where they're sitting. That is okay. Then I'm going to carry on down with the thread, always keeping the thread nice and tight. Then see these here, these ends, draw them back. Bring the thread to the front and bring the thread from the front up. Building up, keeping the thread tight just now, just forget everything. Come straight in without finish. Put your way down, come in and tie off. Remove your thread, then all you do is break, you can break these off, and then two or three coats of varnish, and the fly is finished completely. Now, what I'm doing here is um, using a fine brush to apply the varnish, but you've got to be careful. You don't want it to run onto the feathers. So, walk your way around, and there you are. Mm.